Tapeworm, you know what a tapeworm is. You get a tapeworm, that's, you get that from eating that old rotten meat and stuff. Oh yes you do. And, uh, and, and you work all day. If you're lucky to get a job, even if you ain't got a job, you have to work, don't you? You working even if you're unemployed, you working all the time. You're black in this country. And so you work all day. And you, if you're lucky, you get something to eat. And you eat it. And the tapeworm doesn't do anything but hang on to your intestines. No matter how much you eat, you don't get no bigger. But the tapeworm grows bigger and bigger inside you and it doesn't do any work at all. And this relationship that you have with this parasite called a tapeworm is not one that you can sing it away. If it, if it was possible to engage this tapeworm in what they call a democratic process, you can't vote that tapeworm out of you. You vote, why can't you vote the tapeworm out of you? Because if the tapeworm leaves you, what happens? It dies. And that's the way this system is. It's a parasite on the body of the rest of humanity. It must be destroyed because a tapeworm can be destroyed. But in order to do it, you got to take some revolutionary medicine. And that's what we have to say right today, that we have to use some revolutionary medicine and get this tapeworm off the backs of the people of the world. And that's everybody, especially that's everybody, and that's Africans in particular. I mentioned Africans in this country, but we're Africans wherever we are. Yes. Not just Africans here. Yes. Call ourselves all kind of funny names. You go to a place, uh, there's a place uh, that's on the west coast of Africa. And uh, when the Portuguese got there, what they, what they would always do when they come, they would name the land for the, for the richness they're going to steal. Like that was the Gold Coast, <laughs> remember that? That's what they used to call Ghana. Uh, uh, and there was uh, this place that they, the Portuguese, when they got there, it found a lot of shrimp. And the Portuguese word for shrimp sounds something like Cameroon, right? And so you got all these Africans, because the Portuguese named the place for the shrimp they found there. And so you got Africans who are running around in this place in West Africa calling themselves shrimp. <laughs> Cameroon. They're not shrimp. You know, and, and you've got a situation where people are talking about like Nigeria, Ni Africans from Nigeria like to brag about Nigeria. When they're out of the country, they brag about it. When they're in Nigeria, they don't do that kind of brag because they're constantly trying to fight because the British dropped the whole serious situation on us in this place they call Nigeria. So there were these territories that was controlled by England. And England sent this white man named Lugard, Frederick Lugard, uh, to go there and pull two of these territories together and to one administrative hole, colonial hole. And Lugard said, well, I got to come up with a name for the territory. He had a mistress that he later married. Her name was Flora Shaw. And she came up with the name for this territory. She said, why not nigger area? He said, that works. And so that's what you now call what? Nigeria, nigger area. And, and the thing is that they name us like we are their pets. They're animals and things like that. And that's how you got a nigger area you got Africans who call ourselves by all kinds of names all around the world, but we are one people. And if you understand that, then you can have confidence in the success of our struggle. Because if you understand that, you understand that we are not a minority anywhere. We are part of a dispersed nation of people that is one and a half billion strong in terms of numbers. And then, of course, Africa which is the richest continent on the earth. There's no place in terms of natural resources that's richer than Africa. And everybody got an Africa plan. Everybody's in Africa now, looting just like they have been for the last 600 years. Everybody, including Turkey, India, uh, looting. Uh, uh, England has an Africa plan. Canada has an Africa plan. France has an Africa plan. The United States has an Africa plan. Uh, all of them, China has an Africa plan. But you and I, we here busy trying to get better welfare and Section 8 when Africa is the birthright of every living black person.
person on the planet Earth, and I want it all, damn it, I want it all. I want every bit of it. Not only do I want that, but there is no way. And I, 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 the only reason I'm not in Africa, to tell you the truth, is because this wall we got to make here. Because you cannot get away from this sucker here. This sucker will follow you out of space. Yeah. So before I leave here, I have a responsibility to do something to this monster. Not just for me, but it has fallen on the shoulders of African people to help to rescue the planet Earth and all the resources from this animal that's called U.S. capitalism, U.S. imperialism. But I am going home. Uh, but when I go, I'm taking back every damn thing that we, left, that we created. I'm not going empty-handed. And Africans just shouldn't have to go empty-handed. So I just want to say, there's a crisis that's happening. The U.S. is locked in a death spiral. Anybody can see it. Everybody open the newspaper, it's clear that white power is dying everywhere on earth. It is in a state of decline. U.S. power. U.S. can't tell anybody to do anything. Can't make Iran do anything. Can't make North Korea do anything. Can't make anybody, can't even make somebody in the black community in Philadelphia do anything anymore. So they're in a serious contradiction. And we have to join in consciously with the other peoples on the planet Earth. And Africans, the key to the defeat of imperialism, of capitalism, is in our hands as Africans right here in the belly of the beast. But it can't be in your hands if the only thing you are doing is running around saying black lives matter. Who the hell are you talking to? It doesn't matter to the people who are killing you or they wouldn't be killing you. You, it doesn't, you, you will never be able to have the freedom if you need if all this is walking around saying hands up, don't shoot. Hell, they shoot you with your hands up, hands down, sleep, awake, fat, skinny. It doesn't matter, old, young, they will kill you. And what you and I have to do is accept responsibility like all human beings to be a self-governing people. That is to say, we can govern ourselves and then we can tell white power and white people in general that they can get jobs like the rest of us, that they can play their own basketball and we want them to make your own music. We want you to get your own jobs, go to work, join the people on the planet Earth and fight for freedom. And that's the responsibility of everybody. That's not just black responsibility. That's responsible for everybody in touch with your humanity. Because I'm offended when I see people oppressed any place on the planet Earth. We organized one of the first actions in solidarity with the people who were suffering in Nicaragua. We turned all of our resources over to them when they were engaged in that struggle. I didn't know a single Nicaraguan when we did it. But I knew that U.S. imperialism was attacking and killing them and they were fighting and therefore it was my responsibility to do what I could to support them. White power, white people have a responsibility to struggle in solidarity with black power. Did you hear what I just said? Black power, not you ain't helping me when you tell me you're helping me to integrate. I don't need some integration. I need some liberation. And that's what I'm calling on you to do, is to stand with me in my struggles for liberation so that black people will have the future of our children in our own hands because it's the only hands that it should be in. All power to the people, black power to the African community. Ease where lay to the Africa. And that simply means Africa is our land. Uhuru. Different mentality. It seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. So, so I'm ready. I'm ready for this challenge. And I was built. I was built for this. I think that I think we all have we all have a purpose in life. And mine and mine is going to take on a task that most that most of back away from, from. Impossible. that impossible so people, people say it's impossible I see possibilities I don't see anything, I don't see anything as being impossible, impossible.
mentality, mentality, there are there are different mentalities, but just like just like there's different ways to teach people how to there's different ways to, there's different ways to communicate people. It's different ways it's different ways to communicate people and their different mentalities. So I do so I do see hope and that's hope and that's all coming together and understanding.